Here we go again with another episode of Reliving the War, the show where we go back in time to rewatch and reevaluate episodes of WWF Raw and WCW Nitro. We are now back on track for another standard episode after last week's Unopposed Nitro, so let's get straight to it then as we visit Raw and Nitro from the 19th of February 1996. Both the WWF and WCW are presenting live shows tonight. Nitro is live from Salisbury, Maryland, while Raw is in Cincinnati, Ohio. The Raw broadcast kicks off with a video highlighting the Brett vs. Diesel cage match at In Your House while hyping up tonight's featured bouts. We will see The Undertaker in action, we're going to see Razor Ramon vs. Goldust for the IC title, and whoa, 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 The Ultimate Warrior? This is completely out of nowhere and it's kind of a big deal. Apparently there's going to be some sort of news on The Ultimate Warrior, but we'd have to watch the show to find out what was going on. While it's a bit bizarre that the WWF would throw away a surprise like this at the top of the show, you have to remember that these were the early days of the Monday Night War. Announcing stuff like this early was a way to hook viewers and to staying with the program. Still, I'm sure a lot of fans lost their minds at this very moment. Warrior hadn't been seen in a WWF ring for quite some time, so let's see how the WWF handled his return announcement. Nitro kicks off as standard. The commentary team give us some information about tonight's matches. We'll see the nature boy Ric Flair defend the WCW title against Randy Savage, and we're going to kick things off with the Arn Anderson vs Hulk Hogan rematch while the WWF starts Raw with the Intercontinental title bout, champion Goldust defending against Razor Ramon. We'll start things off on Nitro then, Arn Anderson comes to the ring with woman as Eric Bischoff reminds us that Double A defeated the Hulkster last week, consider this Hogan's revenge match. The Hulkster starts off wrestling like a heel, he won't give the enforcer any time to take off his entrance attire, Hulkster scratches Anderson's back inside the ring and Double A gets choked out on the outside with his own jacket. Bobby Heenan rightfully says that if this was Arn Anderson choking Hogan then there'd be a complete uproar, the brain talking a lot of sense here. Anderson gets rammed into the ring post as the action gets back inside the ring. A big clothesline from the Hulkster knocks Double A off his feet as Anderson just can't get started here at all. Double A does manage to hit Hogan's head on the turnbuckle pad but the enforcer's follow up double axe handle fails to hit its mark. Hulk Hogan continues to work as a bad guy by choking and biting his opponent. The destruction of the enforcer continues as Hogan claws at Anderson's face before throwing Double A to the outside. Hogan uses a fan Hulkamania bandana to choke out Anderson once again, and then back inside the ring, it looks like Arn can finally get a bit of offense in when he grabs Hogan's foot in the corner. But no, Hogan pushes Arn away, Hogan rubs Arn's face on the ring mat, and eventually Hogan takes his very first bump of the match and it looks awful. The fight once again spills to the outside as Hogan goes instantly back into the driver's seat. We see some more dirty tactics on the outside from the Hulkster, and then back inside the ring, Double A whips the Hulkster into the corner and what's going on here? Honestly, what's, go <laughs> what's going on? Look, Arn goes for the DDT afterwards and just look. We see the big boot, Hogan panders to the audience, the Hulkster locks in the figure four, Kevin Sullivan tries to interfere but Randy Savage saves Hogan, and even though neither Arn Anderson nor Hulk Hogan were touched by the Taskmaster or the Macho Man, Nick Patrick calls for the bell and Double A wins via disqualification. This, I don't even know where to begin. You know, people say I give Hogan a hard time in these Reliving the War episodes, but you've got it all wrong. Hogan gives me a hard time, and every week I'm both amazed and confused. I'm amazed that Hogan got paid so much for this kind of work, and I'm confused about how he got away with it. There's no defending this at all. The enforcer, Arn Anderson, a cornerstone of the elite and illustrious Four Horsemen of WCW, was made to look like a complete jobber against Hulk Hogan. The finish was 
was ridiculous, Hogan's extremely limited selling was laughable, and the Hulkster worked babyface or heel depending on what he had for breakfast. Even the most loyal of Hulkamaniacs can't defend this one, and before you turn me a new one in the comment section, go back and watch it for yourself. It's amazing that someone beat Hulk Hogan two weeks in a row, and somehow that person came out looking worse than before. It seems like forever since we got to see a match on Raw, so I'm looking forward to this one. The bad guy Razor Ramon getting his IC title rematch against Goldust. It's quite interesting going back and watching Goldust's earlier entrances. Things were a lot more elaborate with the bizarre one, and it's also fascinating to see how quickly the WWF would begin altering the character. Anyway, just like Hulk Hogan, Razor isn't giving Goldust a chance to get his entrance gear off. The bad guy is giving Goldust a beating as feathers fly all over the ring. Goldust gets clotheslined over the top rope and yeah you can tell Scott Hall wasn't keen on working with Dustin Runnels here. It kind of reminds me of the Dean Douglas stuff. Goldust gets back in the ring and Razor spits on his opponent. The bad guy begins wrenching Goldust's arm while slapping his face and Razor slams Goldust to the mat while still applying the wrench. A reversal spot is then botched, not sure what was going on here, and Goldust is able to reverse the Razor's edge by sending Ramon over the top rope. We come back from commercials and Goldust is in control. Razor finds himself in a sleeper but a reversal sees the bad guy applying a sleeper of his own. Goldust gets out with a jawbreaker but the momentum doesn't last long as Razor stops Goldust from going to the top rope. A superplex follows and then we see a great spot where Razor delivers his signature fall away slam to Goldust over the top rope. I thought this looked awesome even though we didn't see the full impact. Razor brings Goldust back into the ring. The bizarre one gets hit with a side suplex from the top rope and afterwards Goldust just says nope and he leaves the ring. Razor Ramon wins via countout. Another poor finish here. Razor grabs the mic afterwards and the bad guy says he doesn't want the IC belt. He wants the ass of gold dust. Careful what you wish for, Razor. Ramon says he's heard that Roddy Piper is back in the World Wrestling Federation and the new WWF president is the man who can make matches. The bad guy says that Roddy Piper has kids just like Razor Ramon and Razor says he doesn't want his kids watching guys like Goldust on TV. So Razor challenges Roddy Piper to make the match. Razor Ramon vs Goldust at Wrestlemania. Of course this match wouldn't happen. Roddy Piper did indeed book the Miami Alley fight between Razor Ramon and Goldust the next night at the Superstars taping, but Razor would soon get suspended for failing a wellness test. Ramon was left off the Wrestlemania card and the bad guy would use this time to finalise his arrival to WCW. Those who want to see the NWO on Reliving the War, it's coming very soon. A point for Raw by the way, not a great finish here from the WWF match but leagues better than Anderson vs Hogan. Alex Wright takes on Loch Ness over on Nitro while we have a Slam Jam update and the return of Vader on Raw. The Nitro match was brutal as expected, yet it feels kinda wrong destroying a guy's performance with the knowledge that we now have. Loch Ness was sick, his contract would end prematurely when the big man was diagnosed with cancer, as mentioned last week. So rather than tear his match apart, I'll just say that there wasn't much happening at all during the bout. Alex Wright starts off by trying to use his speed to his advantage. Daz Wunderkin tries to bring the big man down with a series of drop kicks, but it's no use. Wright applies a sleeper hold while sitting on the top turnbuckle and strangely the referee doesn't try to break the hold. Bobby Heenan again talks sense by bringing this up and it's completely ignored by Bischoff and Mongo. Alex keeps trying to attack Loch Ness in the corner but it's no good. A boot to the midsection followed by an elbow drop leads to Loch Ness scoring the win. Nothing more to say, it was bad. Over on Raw, Doc Hendricks is jamming out once again with the Raw band and if you look closely you'll see WWE theme music legend Jim Johnson in the background and yes WWE if anyone by any chance is watching this man Jim Johnson deserves a hall of fame induction. Doc lets us know what happened last night at In Your House. We see screenshots of the Owen Hart vs Shawn Michaels match and the WWF confirms the Bret Hart vs Shawn Michaels bout at Wrestlemania. Keep in mind that the Wrestlemania 12 main event 
was not an Iron Man match at this point. The Diesel vs Undertaker match is also confirmed here for WrestleMania 12, and then Vader begins making his way down to the ring. We were supposed to see the Body Donnas vs Barry Horowitz and Aldo Montoya, but Vader instead completely destroys Montoya and Horowitz. Some big stiff shots from the man called Vader here as Jim Cornette watches on with delight. Remember that Vader was reinstated at In Your House for his match with Yokozuna at WrestleMania, a match that wouldn't happen. The Raw tag team bout was of course cancelled, and then a video airs that shows highlights of the Ultimate Warriors career. There's no date given for the Warriors return, there's no WrestleMania 12 hype, it's pretty much a short music video and nothing else, but as mentioned earlier, I'm sure some fans still got really excited for this. An advertisement then plays for WrestleMania 12, the WWF still had tickets available mere weeks before Mania, and you could get yours by calling the number on screen. Another point for Raw, seeing the beginning of the WrestleMania 12 hype and the return of Vader was more enjoyable than the Nitro match. It's just a shame we didn't get more concrete information about the return of the Ultimate Warrior. The Belfast Bruiser, better known as Fit Finlay, is taking on Brad Armstrong on Nitro while the WWF give us Marty Jannetty vs The Ringmaster. Marty's push in the World Wrestling Federation was now coming to an end. You'll remember that Jannetty was getting some big matches on WWF TV over the past few months, but things were not working out. Marty would end up forming a tag team, and the next time we will see Marty Jannetty on Reliving the War is when he teams up with Leaf Cassidy to form the new Rockers. Can't Wait for that. Vince McMahon calls the ringmaster a stone cold man during Steve's entrance. The whole ringmaster thing just wasn't working for Steve and very soon the name would get completely dropped. There's a ton of subtle work done by Austin here in order to bring in this new gimmick. Most notably, Steve Austin takes the time to stare right into the camera without emotion, and you really have to look at the ringmaster's debut again in order to appreciate the change of character here. The ringmaster came in as kind of brash and outspoken, but now Austin was much more cold and calculating. Again, it's subtle, but look out for it. Austin is able to out-wrestle Gennady at the beginning of the match with some good displays of technical skill. Marty fires back with a dropkick, but Austin hits a stun gun as we go to commercials. When we come back, Gennady is momentarily in control, but Austin gets the knees up when Marty goes for a splash. Austin eventually locks in an STF, Gennady makes it to the ropes, but Austin pulls his opponent back driving his leg into the mat. Austin then begins wrenching Marty's neck. Gennady gets whipped to the corner, but Marty gets a foot up. This leads to a face crusher from Gennady, followed by a jumping back elbow. The audience is pretty silent as Marty goes for the backdrop. Austin reverses with the million dollar dream, and it's all over. Marty gets knocked out. Steve Austin stares into the camera, as Vince McMahon says once again that the ringmaster is stone cold. We then see a Mankind vignette, Mick Foley is covered in shadows, he's holding a rat, and Foley talks about God creating Mankind on the 8th day. Mankind said God created everyone normal, but God also forgot so many important parts of Mick Foley. Foley says that the ugliness that lives on the outside of him lives inside of normal people. Mankind rocks back and forth and he begins crying. The segment comes to an end and yeah, good stuff here from the WWF. Mankind looked like something we had never seen before and fans who were familiar with Cactus Jack knew that Mick Foley would put everything he had into this new gimmick. The Belfast Bruiser Fit Finlay, the most played out joke in the wrestling bios comment section, comes to the ring for his match with Brad Armstrong. And forget about every clickbait article or copy and paste YouTube video you've seen about underrated wrestlers who never got their fair dues. Watch a few matches featuring Brad Armstrong from the mid 80s to around pre Vince Russo WCW and you'll see why this guy deserved a lot more than what he was given. Unfortunately, Brad passed away in 2012 but there's a lot of his work to be found on the WWE Network. Check it out if you have the time, but as mentioned, I'd maybe stay away from the buzzkill stuff from late 1999. This match here was very good. Finley begins by taking control of Brad's wrist, transitioning into an armbar, and then Finley gets a little vicious with some stiff strikes. The two men get to their feet and again Finley takes control, this time with a headlock takedown. Finley goes on to deliver a shoulder block to a grounded Brad Armstrong, 
strong. And this fires Brad up for a moment, but Finley is able to overcome Brad's offense with a standing neck wrench. Brad then tries to speed things up with a hip toss pin combination, but Finley kicks out. A high angle headlock takedown follows, and now Brad is able to apply some pressure. The momentum doesn't stay with Brad for long. Finley drills his opponent's face under the ring apron, and Finley follows up by wrapping his opponent's leg around the ring post. Finley then begins working over the leg, transitioning from a single leg crab to a modified toe hold as Brad looks to be in big trouble. Armstrong fights back, and he remembers to sell the leg during his offense. A back body drop is followed by a crossbody that sends both men out of the ring. Finley goes for a backslide inside the ropes but Armstrong kicks out. Brad delivers a face crusher followed by a side suplex but it isn't good enough. Finley hits a unique tilt the world slam to score the win. A good tight match here, everything was on point, no wasted motion, great selling and great impactful offense, particularly from the Belfast Bruiser, who isn't from Belfast by the way. It's a point for Nitro. Our main events are up next, Flair vs Savage on Nitro while the WWF give us Tatanka vs The Undertaker. Let's look at the WCW title match first. The Macho Man Randy Savage has lost it all to Ric Flair, mainly Miss Elizabeth and the WCW title. The commentators say that Savage is now winded tighter than a cheap watch and that would be an understatement. Savage is seeking some revenge and the Macho Man starts the match off by spitting in the face of the Nature Boy. The two lock up and Savage is able to get the better of Flair, strikes in the corner or falls up with a back body drop. Savage goes for some punches but Flair catches Savage with an atomic drop. Flair brings the fight to the outside and Savage gets rammed into the guardrail, sending the macho man into the audience. Flair lights up Savage with some knife edge chops and the WCW champion is looking good here. Savage gets distracted by Woman and this allows Flair to blindside the macho man. Woman gets a sneak attack in for good measure and the fight gets back in the ring. Flair and Savage trade chops and punches as the macho man and begins building up momentum. Flair is able to stop Savage with a back elbow and this leads to the classic Ric Flair face bump. We then see the famous Ric Flair top rope bump and the Macho Man applies the figure four as the audience rises to their feet. Flair gets to the ropes but Savage refuses to release the hold, leading to Nick Patrick forcefully breaking the figure four. Savage then applies a sleeper but Flair counters with a side suplex. The Macho Man takes a back elbow as Miss Elizabeth looks on. Slick Ric is able to deliver a vertical suplex but I think Flair lands awkwardly on his head here. You can see Rick grabbing his head afterwards but fortunately it doesn't appear to be serious. More punches and chops are traded between Flair and the Macho Man and then the Nature Boy is able to apply the figure four after delivering a knee breaker. Savage's pain tolerance is tested as the audience begins rumbling. The crowd cheers as Savage reverses the figure four. Flair kicks out of a backslide attempt and things are heating up really Really well here on Nitro. More chops and punches are traded in the middle of the ring. Savage again spits on Flair, and this makes the Nature Boy drop to his knees and beg for mercy. Savage is now firmly in control. Flair takes his up and over turnbuckle bump, and Savage signals for the elbow drop. And this, dear viewers, is where it all falls apart. You thought the finishes to Goldust vs Ramon and Hogan vs Anderson were bad? Well, this is a total mess. Try to follow along, I can only explain what happens really. Woman throws her shoe into the ring as Miss Elizabeth stands on the ring apron. Savage catches the shoe behind the referee's back and Flair gets nailed. He's out cold. The referee counts. One, two. But then there's no kick out, there's nothing. The bell begins ringing, but nothing happened. The task Master runs around the outside of the ring for no reason. Hulk Hogan shows up to chase Sullivan even though Sullivan wasn't interfering in the match and Arn Anderson dives into the ring to deliver a DDT to Savage. Flair covers Savage. One, two, three. Flair wins even though the bell already rung 10 seconds earlier. It's a mess. It's confusing to both the viewers at home and the viewers in the arena and it's also a real shame because the match itself was very good. We'll come back to Nitro though in a moment, there's even more nonsense following this match. 
The Undertaker versus Tatanga on Raw. We now know that the Phenom will face Big Daddy Cool Diesel at WrestleMania, and Diesel was now making plans to leave the World Wrestling Federation to jump over to World Championship Wrestling. The Undertaker starts things off by grabbing Tatanka by the throat and pushing him into the corner. Taker sends his opponent to the opposite corner, and Tatanka takes a big right hand from the Phenom. Tatanka chops the dead man, but it has no effect. Taker gets launched into the ropes, but Tatanka gets slammed head first into the mat. Undertaker is on fire tonight on Raw. Just as Tatanka finally gets some offense in with a Samoan drop, we see Diesel coming down to the ring holding an axe. Big Daddy Cool grabs a cameraman, and the poor guy is instructed to follow Diesel backstage. When we come back from commercial break, we have a split screen going on. Tatanka is applying a headlock on the Undertaker, while Diesel says he has something to show us. Big Daddy Cool then begins destroying the Undertaker's casket with the axe. Meanwhile, Taker gets out of the headlock with a side suplex. The dead man delivers his signature jumping clothesline while Diesel continues to rack the Undertaker's casket. Taker goes for the tombstone in the ring, but Tatanka reverses it with a pile driver of his own. It's a bit difficult to keep your attention on just one screen here as Diesel is having a great old time destroying what Jerry Lawler calls the Undertaker's home. Taker hits old school, we see the tombstone, the dead man wins via pinfall. Taker sees the casket getting destroyed on the screen, and he goes back to find Diesel. It's a point to Nitro here, the finish of the WCW main event was absolutely horrible, but the over Overall in-ring action was much more exciting than Tatanka vs The Undertaker. I did like the story progression on Raw though for sure. Time for our final segments this week on Reliving the War. We have another Billionaire Ted skit on Raw, while WCW gives us the fallout of their main event match. The Taskmaster, Arn Anderson and Ric Flair are beating up Hulk Hogan in the middle of the ring. Who runs in for the save? Well, Ed Leslie runs in for the save. Bischoff and company act like they have never seen this person before and they all act surprised. But this of course was the Dungeon of Doom Zodiac, or Brutus Beefcake if you like. Leslie takes out the heels all on his own before giving chase up the entranceway. Leslie comes back to the ring to help Savage, and the heels take over the commentary table. Ric Flair begins bragging about successfully defending his WCW title once again. Ed Leslie makes the heels disappear by dancing and waving his arms about like a complete lunatic. I'm serious by the way, the Hulkster shows up and he announces that Ed Leslie is now known as the Booty Man. No explanation given, nothing at all, and the fans begin filing out of the arena in the middle of the promo. The Booty Man looks like he's taken a copious amount of Class A's as Hogan challenges the Taskmaster, Flair and Anderson to a six-man tag match next week against Savage, the Booty 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 Man, and the Hulkster himself. Look, this is good for a laugh, but it's also pretty horrible TV. Over on Raw, we're in the CNN studios, or the B. CNN Studios, the Billionaire News Network, for Larry Fling Live with special guest Billionaire Ted. Larry Fling welcomes us to his show by saying hello to his five girlfriends and four ex-wives before introducing Billionaire Ted. We get our first caller and it's Randy from Sarasota, Florida. Randy says that his hair is thinning and he quickly gets kicked off the air while Ted says that this Randy guy sounds like a moron. Terry from Tampa, Florida calls in. Ted realises that that this is the huckster and Terry says he wants next Monday off because he got hit with a woman's high heel shoe. Very good, very good. Ted gives the huckster next week off. Ted's wife at the time, Jane Fonda, phones in and she says that Ted's suits are ready to pick up from the Sears department store. She quickly gets kicked off the air too. Larry Fling then asks Ted about the monopolistic stranglehold that Turner has on the world of professional wrestling, reminding Ted that Hulk Hogan's salary isn't paid via WCW but rather it's paid through profitable divisions within Turner's media empire. Ted loses his voice and he can't give an answer. Larry Fling wraps up the show by saying that the Huckster and the Nacho Man will be his special guests next week. Raw then goes off the air with Paul Bear and The Undertaker finding the destroyed casket. It's a point for Raw. The billionaire Ted skit was quite funny this week. I really can't see the booty man earning many points for WCW over the next few months. Thank you. 
Raw got the first point with the Goldust vs Razor Ramon match, Alex Wright vs Loch Ness failed to impress and so Raw also got the second point with the return of Vader. Steve Austin began to slowly introduce his Stone Cold character, but Finlay and Brad Armstrong put on a solid match that was just better to watch. And in the main events, I gave the point to Flair vs Savage even though the ending was a complete mess. Billionaire Ted and Larry Fling secured the final point for the WWF, so Raw wins this week's episode of Reliving the War. This means our overall scores are now 8 points to Raw, 11 points to Nitro, and we've had 3 ties. Raw also won in the television ratings this week, scoring a 3.1 against Nitro's 2.9. Ok so I'm going to need your help. Next week will be another standard episode of Reliving the War and then the following week we'll maybe need to do another special episode but let me know how you'd like me to handle this. The WWF air an unopposed episode of Raw in two weeks time so we can either quickly go over the 4th of March results before looking at the Raw vs Nitro battle that took place on the 11th of March. Or we can do what we done last time and upload a special episode that goes a little more in depth. Let me know in the comments and as always, thank you for watching. Wrestling Bios and Reliving the War is made possible thanks to viewers just like you supporting me on Patreon. With the uncertainty of YouTube, Patreon supporters help to keep me and the channel secure and it's because of the supporters that I can continue working on these videos nearly every day of the week. So a special shout out to everyone on Patreon, your help is deeply appreciated. This week's Hall of Famers are Jess Simpson and Raul Adams. No, not Raul Adams of the Adams Family. It's Raul who plays Tetris over on Twitch at an extremely high level. I'm not joking, I thought I was decent at Tetris until I saw Mr. Adams cleaning house like a Hulk Hogan run-in brother. Check out his channel if you don't believe me, you'll see a link on your screen right now. Thanks to Jess, Raul and everyone else on Patreon for keeping me going through these uncertain times.